So I was actually working up at Pittsburgh, um, at, at University of Pittsburgh, on a project um, to develop a game for middle school girls to get them interested in science and technology. And that game eventually became Click Urban Adventure Game, which we did as a live action role playing game. Eventually, other people took it over, and it eventually actually won one of the, the DML awards like years later. But I'm kind of tied to that. But um, so I'm working with these middle school girls, about half of which were African American. We were doing a lot of co design with them and trying to understand their culture and where they came from. Um, and I realized that we had a lot of research on girls in gaming. Like that was very cutting edge at that point in time in 2005 a lot of people were publishing but we didn't have anything on African Americans in gaming and I wanted to understand a little bit more so I went you know to the literature as one does and um, there was nothing out there on African Americans in gaming um, and as we do as researchers that was very exciting to me because it means there's some potential there so um, I started to look at it and I'm like well I know that young African American game a lot but they're not going into technology because of all of their gaming um, that was my assumption. And when I did look at some of the demographic information, yeah, young African American men and Latino men actually game the most hours per week of any other group, but they are not well represented in computing or other technology fields. So unlike the, the common wisdom of the time, is if you could get people gaming like young Asian and Caucasian men, then they're going to go into technology. That wasn't really proving true, um, which is a great question to start to look at. So um, we were in Pittsburgh, there was a large African-American population, and I don't speak Spanish, so I focused with the African-American men. <laughs> what I found when I looked at observing how they were gaming and how they talked about gaming, um, they talked about gaming the same way they talked about sports. So there was a strong sense of sportsmanship. Um, they played a lot of sports games on console systems. They didn't hack the games. They never played around with the rules at all. They never uh, looked at strategy guides or anything about modifying any of the computation underneath the game. Um, and at that point, I was looking for a graduate program, and I went to Georgia Tech, um, and I was working with I'm working with Dr. Bruckman there. So we started to explore this issue of sportsmanship a little more closely, and how people their practice of playing games rather than just playing or not playing. Um, and we, I talked to a lot of computer scientists and did a large scale survey with undergraduates in computer science, engineering, and humanities. Um, and we found that what it, the difference was for people who got into computer science or into technological like emphasis was it their habits of playing games and how they leveraged that was because they were hacking, modding, cheating in games, building strategy guides with their friends, and eventually frequently building games with their friends. But these other activities and practices were happening first. And that's how they started looking at computation. And that was what the difference was. Um, so my first inclination was to get young African American men hacking games. Um, but, you know, reflecting on that a little bit, it's not the right approach. I needed to step back and kind of appreciate their own cultural values and what they brought to their play practices. So um, we tried to look for a legitimate reason to break these games open and look at the computation. It seems really obvious and easy right now to say, well, that's game testing, but we didn't know it at the time. So we decided to form a game testing group after a number of different iterations and um, co-design process with young African American men in Atlanta. We worked really closely with young men at the computer clubhouse to help design the entire program. Um, and it's called the Glitch Game Testers. The guys work full-time in the summer, part-time during the school year. We generally have between a dozen and 20 students working with us. We've been running for three years. Um, and they get paid $8 an hour testing real games for real game companies. Um, we also include an hour of computer science coursework kind of each day. It's more workshoppy than a normal class would be. And in the first semester, or the first year that they're involved in the program, they're doing real um, uh, stuff with Alice, a drag and drop programming language, or with other more computational media type approach to teaching CS. It's real introductory. And then in the guys who finished their first year asked us to take more advanced computer science, which is a great thing. Um, and so we have been teaching them advanced placement computer science in order for them to take the test at the end of their year. We've had kind of amazing results. Um, nobody's dropped out of high school. Um, of the 16 guys who have graduated from high school, 15 have gone to college. And of those 15, 13 are in computing-related majors. 
which these are unheard of kind of results for a computer science program to increase participation in computing, especially with this demographic, which is probably one of the more difficult to reach. I think that um, there's a few different levels of impact. One is that we're, we're trying to find ways to sustain the glitch game testers going forward to really um, continue doing what we're doing. I think that there is a lot that I found in my research that will apply specifically to how we work with and teach young African American men and the kind of things that move them between beyond um, what I'm, I'm looking at is their, their motivation to not learn. They're actively choosing to not learn in schools because it's not cool, because it places them in a position that they don't want to be in then their families. They don't want to be the intellectual one in the family. Um, we're trying to find ways, and we found the Glitch Game Testers was a way to get them to move beyond that. They could tell their friends, oh yeah, I just do it because I get paid to play. It's the coolest thing ever. Like, that's the coolest teenage job ever, possibly, for them. Um, but the reality is that game testing is really tedious, detailed quality assurance work. And their day-to-day -day lives testing, they were, it was a drag, and it sucked. And, um, but they were able to... So they were exci more excited each day about doing their computer science projects than they were about game testing. But they never told anyone about the computer science projects. Only did they talk about that and enjoy that with each other. To their family and friends, they just had this face-saving tactic, which was, we are get paid to play. Or, you know, just, you know, it's a job. That's what I do because I'm a man. And that's what, you know, you take your responsibility and you show up each day. And these, in some ways, weren't, what I believe were the true motivations of what they were doing, but they were the face-saving tactics they were able to put forward in the world as an identity that didn't embarrass them about being computer scientists. So I think those kind of lessons can be applied for young African-American men, and then I think our design process to get to that point is something that can be really generalizable for a lot of groups that are difficult to reach. I think the thing that surprised me is that our cohorts here um, really connecting with them has probably been the most meaningful thing for me. Uh, and it wasn't that I didn't think I'd like them or anything like that, but we connected on a level that I didn't expect. And coming from different disciplines and different backgrounds, um, everybody was extremely open and collaborative and there wasn't you know, no competition, no judgment. We were just really able to share our resources in a way that I think that if we'd all been come from exactly the same discipline, it might have been more difficult. But because we knew we were bringing in different things, it was great. Um, the other thing is that the mentors that worked with us were fantastic. And um, they spent time on our work. They both were enthusiastic about it, keeping us excited about our work, as well as, I think, challenging us and uh, pushing us to, to make it a little bit better. So the important thing to me and what I do next is that, and why I went into academia, I'm a little bit older than your average academic, so um, I did it because I want to, I really want to make things in the world, and I'd like to continue making things that I feel make a difference in the world and make it a little bit better place. Um, that's probably not what most academics are after, um, but I think that that's an important part and an important thing that academics need to focus on too.